I mean, we don't think about it. But let's say, imagine you have to go to someone to ask for food, right? Isn't it a very humbling experience already? So, so yeah. La. In the past few months, we've seen a glimpse of reality that many of us, our friends, our neighbors, are struggling to get by day by day. Many of us are left without a job. Some left with little to no food for days, or some even having to give up their homes. I reached out to a few NGOs in both West and East Malaysia to share further on the reality of what's happening around us and how you and I can help those who need it most. Wow. So, so my car is full of like groceries, rice, oil, Maggie noodles, plastic containers, and then the vegetables are all the way at the back. <laughs> okay, so my name is Bing. I am running a soup kitchen with my husband. Started with soup kitchen to provide cooked meals, but now for the MCO period, we're running like a food bank as well. Since we opened up our campaign food relief program, we've received more than 700, close to 800 requests over three days. I'll get text messages at 12 o'clock at night, even 3 a.m. in the morning, needing food. It's been bad for MCO. It's been very bad. We hear stories of like six months without job, four months without job. You never can imagine the amount of messages we got every single day, you know, when it comes to mental health. At this point of time, it is not a normal kind of poverty that we're dealing with. These people who never ever asked for help previously would now be desperate to ask for help. So we cannot expect them to know what to do. It's always the same case, loss of income, lost job, husband is no longer working, and I have three kids, and my daughter doesn't have milk, for example. B40, M40 categories, is all jumbled up. It does not make sense anymore. You know, I've had this Pachi calling me, he's all alone, 82 years old, living in PJ. He lives on eating just powdered Milo. 10 kilograms of that per month, he said, just on powdered, powdered Milo. The toughest is actually when people ask for milk for their babies. That, that's the hardest. Over in East Malaysia, volunteers are trying to reach those in the rural areas and the islands where food banks may not be as easily accessible. Some aid missions can take 24 hours to complete. We're going out to like Bintango, we're in Mulka, we're helping rural areas in Bintulu, Miri and Cebu as well. These families don't have access to internet. These kids haven't been in school. They don't have refrigeration. They don't have stable electricity. A lot of them don't even have access to clean water. Bayangkan dekat pedalaman yang tiada peluang ekonomi yang besar. So before MCO pun diorang amat tinggal di paras kemiskinan. So imagine masa MCO ni. Uh, kalau dekat darat kita orang banyak naik lori lah. 200 pack, 300 pack. Dan kita akan hantar naik bot dekat pulau-pulau. Dia mencabar lah sebenarnya sebab satu melihat pada keadaan cuaca dan juga uh, air pasang surut. So kalau macam air surut, kita tak boleh reach pulau tu <coughs> and then kita kena turun dan kita kena angkat beras and everything untuk sampai ke pulau. Together, these NGOs feed thousands of people weekly and yet aid is still never enough. Any help from those who are able could mean keeping a family afloat. So, what can we do for the people around us? Every family who come to us and ask for help, we will provide at least basic like this. You can also pack your own food aid for others. Any canned food is like a dream. Like a five kilo bag of rice, bacon, eggs, cooking oil, milk, sugar, salt, dry biscuits, and soy sauce. Stock cubes is also another great one. Joy items, toothpaste and toothbrushes, and sanitary pads. A lot of women are sacrificing sanitary pads in order to buy food for their family. Just make sure that everything is unopened, not expired, and in good condition. We're just helping with the basics, which is just easing that one burden of food. Then maybe whatever they earn, they could help with other things like petrol to be able to go to work. You've got medical issues as well. We can't expect them to know how to reach out. We must reach out to them. I wanted to put dignity in this work. I don't want people to come begging at me. That's not right. For me, basic necessities are not for you to beg. Diorang bukannya tak nak kemodenan cuma kita tidak memberi peluang kepada dia orang sebenarnya. I would just say to the Malaysians you know to be a bit kinder. There are people like us 
the things that bother them, right, are the same things that bother us. They are not like an uh, emotionless class of people. Jangan pandang orang macam different, tapi anggap orang macam uh, sama macam macam kita lah manusia. Sebab orang pun ada hati dan perasaan juga.